Hello, good evening, and welcome to Upfront. Today, we will interrogate perhaps government's biggest agenda in the area of sanitation because the president himself, during the State of Nations address, described the situation as unacceptable, lamenting the state of sanitation in the country. I'm sure that's something that most of us can agree with. As we know, many of the cities in the country are engulfed by filth. We have a new ministry which set out to actually tackle the issue. Many have said the ministry is doing very little, or very little is being seen in the direction of the action it's pursuing in this particular area. Today, we would interrogate the agenda of this ministry. We would actually seek to find out why we are not seeing the action on the ground and what is being done, or what will be done in the course of the year, to fix this problem permanently. Kofiada is the Minister for the Sanitation and Water Resources. He also talking to me about water. He'll be my guest pretty soon. But first, I want you to watch this that my colleague Jojo Kobna put together. It's quite grotesque, but it actually depicts the reality of sanitation in the country. After that, we have the conversation with the minister. Eleven years ago, Indoor, as I choose to call him, made a journey to Accra. He had very high expectations of getting a very good job. But after about four months of struggling to get a job in the slums of Old Fadama, Indoor had to take a very difficult decision. He accepted to do the most dehumanizing job. Carrying toilets. This day starts at 2 a.m., when the night is darkest, providing a perfect cover for him to clean up two public toilets and empty the pan latrine. This work is demeaning, yet to endure, it is the only job that puts food on the table. For his wife and three children, Endo has done too well, keeping this a secret. <laughs> and doesn't just carry the weight of la train at night at sunrise he walks through the neighborhood bearing an even heavier weight stigma maybe carrying toilets has done a greater harm to Ndo than merely crippling his self-worth it's robbed him of ability to dream of a working world away from toilets and the stench that envelopes his office future plans here Devin. okay As common with pan latrine men, smoking helps them deal with a heavy stench. Bindo says he has never smoked 
so he inhales the heavy stench daily. He carries the toilet, walks for about 10 minutes and dumps it into a cesspit for future dislodge. Toilet business is big here in Old Fadama. People patronize the facility throughout the day and night. Workers are not willing to grant interview, but they told me it is lucrative. It is shocking to know that people rent enema syringe to purge their colons. This comes with serious infections, but many people here do not care. Endo has no idea that his job is illegal. In fact, the Supreme Court in 2008 banned his job, declaring it an assault on human dignity. This was after Nana Ejeampofo, a lawyer, stampeded the Supreme Court in 2006, pleading with judicial powers to declare carrying human excreta a degrading and humiliating experience which should not be classified as work. His plea was taken, and the Supreme Court ordered the Crown Metropolitan Assembly to fashion out a plan to totally eradicate the pan latrine system by 2010. I thought that it was an eyesore and uh a disgrace to humanity. So I decided, I gave warnings to AME. The warnings were disregarded and uh, I had to go to court to see the declaration that the practice was degrading and dehumanizing. And the court, the Supreme Court, agreed with me. I hear that they are still doing it. I'll give another caution. If they do not stop, I'll go to court with them again. The Supreme Court's ruling ordered the AMA to build 1,500 water closets and 500 KVIPs across the capital for public use and financially assist persons with latrines to convert into water closets. Also, the AMA was ordered to help poor communities build toilets and make sure that no building is constructed without toilet facilities. The AMA was ordered to prosecute landlords who have not built toilet facilities in their homes. In August 2017, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly told the Daily Graphic that the pan latrine system had been phased out completely. Nana Ejeam Pofo is unhappy that pan latrines are still used in a crime. In my area at that time, they were doing it. And I remember every two weeks, I had to buy a gallon of disinfectants to uh, the carriers, all of whom died in a matter of five years. And that was one of the things that motivated me. And the, the causes of death, in respect of all of them, were either uh, upper respiratory tract infections or something related to infections arising from the work that they were doing. Ghana has about 85.7% of its population without decent toilet facilities and this equals about 23 million people who suffer the fear and indignity of relieving themselves in the open or in unsafe hygienic toilets. This is captured in a report by WaterAid in 2017. For every home which has a pan latrine, another indoor is needed to carry their toilet. That's what makes the job of the latrine men a miserable irony. They serve a need which remains a scar on the conscience of our society. With about six public toilets operating the pan latrine system at Old Fadama, the AMA has a lot of work to do to enforce the court's judgment. George Kobner, Joy News.
And also pleasant pictures there, but the reality actually is that it is not really the case that many people are not suffering this situation. This is too prone. First and foremost, an action that's illegal. Secondly, a livelihood to a Ghanaian who should not be going through this particular dehumanizing experience. The crux of it is the sanitation situation in the Republic of Ghana. As I did tell you, my guest today is the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources. Before I speak to him, I want you to understand the response of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly to this particular issue. AMA boss spoke to Israel I on this one. Let's put the issues in context. Old Fadama is an informal settlement that has a population of over 100,000. We admit that there are issues of uh, sewage systems, issues of electricity, issues of water, issues of sanitation. All these issues that really characterizes an informal settlement as, are, are there. So we will, not, we will not run away from the fact that uh, there are no issues there. But Somewhere last year, we detected about 40 of them, and I can also... 40 of, of them, but I can tell you that... The um, public, these public I toilets can, using... Pan I can tell you that um, we worked on it, and then 33 had been converted into water closet. Because we are also doing what we call the Gamma Project on Sanitation, where the World Bank had, is supporting us to uh, pay half of the beneficiaries will just be half of the amount the that's of, of, uh, but and the and as I speak to you now in January it used to be four thousand Ghana cities and then the beneficiary household the household beneficiary will pay two thousand Ghana cities but we have reduced it to thousand one hundred Ghana cities this year and we have even further reduced it to five hundred and five hundred and fifty Ghana cities. So the once you pay your 500, in fact, we are not even waiting for you to pay your 550 Ghana cities. Once you, you start paying, the contractor is obliged to start the construction for you. Right. So all these are attempts to eradicate the pan lattice in the system. What do we do about this particular situation that we're talking about? And the journalist who worked on it, worked on the story, says he identified six of them. Yes. That's why I'm saying that uh, we had identified 40. about 40 earlier, which we have worked on it to uh, reduce it to seven as of last year. Then if she, he had identified six, it means that one had been worked on on my blind side, which of course is an improvement. But we want to get to zero. We want to make sure that people ease themselves in, a, in an environment which is very clean and you don't see pan latrines in the system. So. It's something that we worked on it so um, work three days, on, uh, three days ago. Happening? Of course, the public health department. The whole of last week, our public health department uh, mobilized all the environmental health officers within the car metro from everywhere, together with national service personnel and our metro guards. And then uh, we deployed them into the Ashidu Keteke. And Ashidu Keteke includes Old Fadama. Um, to ensure that the people comply with the sanitation bylaws. And that is the information that they even got. So yesterday, they were supposed to go back onto the fort because they also detected this uh, sex. They were supposed to go back to the fort. But it's an, it's an area that um, when you are going, you also have to make sure that uh, you engage other stakeholders, including the police, to be able to to enforce your bylaw. You mean it's virtually like a no-go area? I haven't said so, but it's, I'm saying that uh, it's an Probably area... Probably that's what you mean. In a, it, that's, your, that's your opinion. It's an area that when you are going, you need to engage other stakeholders to help you to enforce You just don't go in anyhow. I mean, it's an informal community, and um, I've told you the population there is over 100,000 people. So you are, you are very careful and mindful of the numbers if you want to take a decision in that particular community. Is there the chance that the AMA will just go in and shut it down? Of course. You're shutting down the public land. We have to do, we have to do so because there are alternatives that we are providing. And I'm saying that under the, uh, the household toilet that we are doing, we have reduced it even to 550 for low-income communities from 2000 in, in, in 2016 
we reduced it to 2,100 in 2017. In 2018, we have reduced it to 550. And we have also outsourced it to large-scale contractors because we are expecting the, the, the subscription to, go, to increase. And even with the 550, if you pay 100 Ghana cities, if you pay 50 Ghana cities, where can start? The, the contractor is obliged to, to start. As I speak to you now, we had we had constructed over we constructed over 400 last year, and then we've started a large scale construction. In fact, by the end of March, by the end of March, from January to March, we are supposed to construct additional 400. That's the target we set for ourselves. So, what's the plan? Well, the plan the plan is that um, we, should we, also, we should also we should also find alternative, and that's why I'm saying that uh, once you are you are in the process of shutting it down. You are also offering an alternative that this is the Gamma uh, uh, project that is coming. It says that, look, pay a little amount of money and then we'll construct this thing also for you. Okay. So are we shutting it down tomorrow? When are you doing that? Of course, we are going there tomorrow. In fact, um, I, I, this story had come to us also as a surprise because, as I said, the whole of last week, if you monitored our, uh, our public health department, we deployed a lot of the environmental health officers. And Old Fadaman was one area that we spent some time there. And the whole idea is that um, cases of this nature need a follow-up. And the follow-up is supposed to even for today because it rains, and if it rains, you know that place is very mushy, uh, walking about that area, it's, it's a bit um, difficult. But we're going there tomorrow. All right, now, apart from shutting it down and bringing in the alternative, the options that you're talking about, how about prosecutions? Because what they were doing is against the law. Well, I, 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 I agree with you that it's against the law, but it's all part of the process. So what happens to them? Are we just let, going to let, let it slide because uh, it's a difficult area? It's not a difficult area. I think that you should ask yourself, what's the objective? What do you want to achieve? What we want to achieve is to provide a very clean and convenient place for people to attend the chess call. That is our preoccupation and that's what I am focusing on. Other issues such as um, uh, prosecution and um, telling people to uh, not to do so. Uh, they are part of the gamut of issues, but we need to prioritize what we want to achieve. you welcome back. This is Upfront. The conversation on sanitation is very wide-ranging. Luckily, the minister joins us for this particular conversation. And I'll be welcome to Upfront. Thank you very much. I mean, it's two months into the year. What's been happening? A lot has been happening. Uh, we've had to go through the budget cycle mm -hmm. and get through our budget uh, approved. Uh, we presented uh, a work plan, a procurement plan. Uh, to the respective agencies, to the Minister of Finance. Uh, we're waiting approval to be able to roll. Uh, we've got the details on what we want to do this year. Uh, we've had the presidency uh, adopt uh, uh, amongst the flagship projects what we should be doing in sanitation. And now we're waiting for the final strategic plan uh, and the 10-year rolling plan uh, for, for us to begin to uh, roll. That's a 10-year plan? No, actually, it's an initial period of uh, about uh, four years and then go on, roll on to 30 years, not uh, 10, 30 years. I'll be asking you what this really entails, but I know it will certainly fit into the bigger ambition Absolutely. of having to, what they call it, make Accra cleanest in the entirety of Africa. Very I mean, true. what's been happening with that vision? With that vision, We've had to re-examine the entire city in terms of uh, uh, the areas that need uh, the greatest concentration. Mm. We've had to also consider the logistics we need, the personnel we, we require in terms of enforcement, and then the, uh, the personnel that should be deployed on the streets, the equipment that uh, is required to evacuate the waste from the dumping sites uh, uh, in towns to the final disposal sites in Accra, it involves a whole lot of activities, right? That, that, from that's interesting. Cleaning. That's all happening in two months. 
Oh, well, you talking about two men? No, no, I thought you were asking what's involved in the okay, Accra oh, Very much campaign. so, because, I mean, yes. clearly, I was thinking of from oh. last year to this particular year. Oh, okay. Well, you know, said uh, two years. That's January mm -hmm. and, and going to February now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just concluded a implementation plan and the allocation of the resources that have been pledged by the president. We're waiting for releases from the Minister of Finance to begin to move on. That's where we are now. And we've uh, sensitized everybody and get them all ready to be able to roll along. Okay, so as we speak, um, when do we hope money will be released for actual implementation? Well, I was due to see the Minister of Finance uh, this afternoon, but I had to uh, run back here, and I hope tomorrow morning I'll get a clear answer from him. Okay, but there's a lot of talk about what's currently been happening in the city mm -hmm. and whether or not progress <coughs> is happening. Because, I mean, I did speak to you last year. You gave me an indication that, well, by the uh, middle of this year, I a crowd will see what it ought to be seen as that particular bastion of a clean, tidy society that the dream is supposed to make it. Are we still on course? Very much so. We're still on course, and I still stand by my statement that by June we see a remarkable difference in the way sanitation is handled in this country. We see some uh, very clean spots all over the place. We see mm. everybody gearing up on what they should do to assist uh, in that effort to clean up the. the uh, uh, the city and the country. So we're very much on course and I'm convinced that we will deliver. But there are, however, as we speak, um, some emergency <coughs> situations. Mm -hmm. For example, reference is being made to the specific situation about the system in Old Fadama where, contrary to what the Supreme Court prescribed, mm -hmm. uh, people still carry pan latrines in the 21st century in this country. And we are can identify as much as six of these public um, lavatories that run this pan latrine system. It's very sad that shouldn't be happening, and uh, that is why the government secured the funds to be able to implement the uh, Greater Accra Metropolitan Area uh, project uh, called Gamma. Mm -hmm. uh, we've since awarded 11,000 uh, toilets contract to uh, uh, some vendors. Uh, they've begun. Uh, I've not gone out yet to see exactly where. Uh, they've started constructing, but we've awarded the contracts to them. They've signed and they've gone on the field and we're yet to go around and monitor. And certainly, I don't think within this uh, past uh, few weeks or month, they would have done too much work. But okay. that should replace the pan latrines that we see in Old Fadama. Would this, that include, be and, and would this include specifically Old Fadama? Absolutely. But Absolutely. this... It's shared amongst all of the 11 okay. uh, municipal metropolitan uh, assemblies. So it says 11,000. Yes, uh, that's the first round. The first round of 11,000. So total of 19,000 under the, uh, the uh, Gamma project. Mm -hmm. But we are targeting uh, 20,000 for Greater Accra. But is it the same Gamma project that says that we will pay half, you pay the rest of the amount of money? Well, that's the principle. The principle is that you should contribute, not half in terms of cash. Okay. Okay, if you provide the space that uh, we will construct the toilet, all that can go for part of the payment in kind. Uh, if uh, it involves excavating the earth, to get uh, some uh, structures set up that can be part of the payment in kind. Where uh, you cannot afford any of that and you can put some money out there, certainly it's welcome. Where you don't have the cash up front and you have to uh, resort to the assistance of some financial organization that's prepared to lend you the money up front, that too is also being considered. Okay. So, so it's not half up front in terms of cash. Uh, up front, no. Is there a deadline for account. all of these 11,000 being built? Uh, we are targeting by the end of uh, June, July, we should see more than half of them in place. Okay. And we're hoping that by the last quarter of this year, we'll be able to roll out another 8,000. Okay, that, that's interesting to note. I mean, re related to this is the fact that um, the main discussion on sanitation is also connected to the drainage system. Yes. For example, there's a huge complaint about why some sewage system is virtually collapsed and connected to the main drains from Dansuman Shell uh, Four Station through uh, Dakuman Junction, and the place has a huge stench that people cannot cope with. Yes. What's been done about that situation? Well, first of all, I think those kinds of situations arise from the solid waste choking up the flow of the, the water from mm -hmm. those gutters. And that's the sort of problem that we had uh, the uh, Mala market area where we had to go and evacuate that huge heap of ref refuse. Okay. Which is now uh, becoming a very a, controversial a, issue. Not a controversial matter, it's a very simple matter, as a matter of fact, if you listen to the story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, f a huge heap of refuse that have been sitting there 
that had the potential to create all kinds of health hazards to the people, also to create floods there. And so the ministry was able to assist the AMA to go there through the use of the service providers to evacuate that huge uh, heap of refuse, get them out of sight, and bring some laterite and cover uh, that site and ramp it over and make it neat, nice, ready to hand over now. Uh, we are now in negotiations with the AMA to hand over that site back to them so that they can put it to some useful activity, whether it's going to be a park, whether it's going to be uh, a functional area, I will not necessarily want to say a market, but any other thing that you and I or AMA decides it's a matter of priority, so, something so that's needed in that area. It, it, looks, so the it sounds like a good idea. Talking about uh, around the Dansuma uh, Gol area mm -hmm. is similar to that. It's the waste that's choking up the flow of the, but the, the water. What the you're cutters. saying is that it looks like people have connected their sewage system from that's their homes it, yes. to these, uh, what they call the main drains, yes. and they're virtually spewing, including human excreta, into yes. the drains. Yes. Well, that's illegal. It's not supposed to be the case. In fact, there are some uh, gadgets now which can really uh, more or less drain off the waste and take the solid out of it and, and get clean water coming back into the, the gutters. That's what it should be applying. Otherwise, nobody is supposed to move their solid waste or their liquid waste straight from their house into the gutters. That's illegal. What's been done about that? Well, the enforcement is the key, and that's what we're rolling out. That's part of the, what we're trying to bring on board by way of the sanitation brigade. AMA has started to do that. They arrested some of the people. They're stopping uh, some of the houses from doing that. They will certainly be search surcharged. Uh, if we, we, we find any case like that. So enforcement is going to be stepped up. It was said by the president during his State of the Nation address, and we are gearing up to make sure we roll them out. They will be everywhere inspecting and bringing the culprits to book. Today is actually the <coughs> deadline that the market men in Malam has actually given <coughs> to your ministry, insisting that the local government ministry give them the right to stay there. They've engaged the families, the Barikwate family, and they have a right to access the lands. They also complain about damage caused by the military in this case. What's going to be done about that situation? Uh, your presentation is not quite accurate. As you speak, as a matter of fact, the market queens and the leadership who were there when we went to try and evacuate the, the, the waste supported us. They cooperated with us. And they are not part of this uh, group that has come in appearing to be creating trouble for us. Oh, okay. And so it's a different grouping? To totally different But group. these are people who sell sorts. They've been selling that for you, a very I'm long time. That they're a totally different group. The market women who are there, they're mm -hmm. part of the team that has supported us to get this done. And uh, what has happened is that, let me tell the full story. The story is that there's a young man, a group of young men, who took over the area and allowed the waste collectors to dump the, uh, the refuse there. Do they belong to any of these families, the same place too? I wouldn't know for a fact. I've heard that they belong to some of the families, but I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. And so we had to bring the security agencies to get them out of sight so that we can evacuate the waste. So you drove out the young men and not the market women? Not the market women. I said the market women supported us. They cooperated with us. Our, our they engaged were there. Them. They spoke to no, them. Let me, let me tell you the story. Mm -hmm. Another group of them came today and said that they Another are not group part of market of, women. Yes. Those that will be engaging, they said they are not part of those who came in there. Those who came in and dumped their waste there are the ones instigated by these young men who want to claim the, the area back. We are not against giving the land back to the rightful owners or to AMA. Okay. In fact, we're working towards that. We're negotiating with AMA to make sure that when we hand over to them, we don't, we don't relapse back to that situation again. And so the team that was part of what uh, program we put in place to get the place cleaned up are the ones who are saying, no, they are not part of it. So these were people who were more or less uh, encouraged to come and do this to bring trouble uh, against the security agencies. Indeed, if I were there, what I would have encouraged was to carry those wares to a safe place at the AMA or the military barracks somewhere. Let the people, people who are putting the wares uh, the, the there to come back and claim that and tell them who actually is together and send the things there. But they were destroyed. They're not part of that team. 20,000 well, worth of salt. the military have a way of dealing with things. Where they've given some improper. notice. The that's information I got, yeah. the information I got is that they were given six hours to take the things not back. Not 30 minutes? No, no, six hours. That's what the they say it was 30 minutes. That's the official report that I got. Have you spoken to the people on the ground? I've spoken to them. I've spoken to them. Not the military. I'm talking about the people on the ground. I've spoken to some of them. This particular situation. Those who came up today and said that they were not part of the team and that those who came in and but those put the be waste the there, they were being instigated by people who were not part of the whole arrangement to clean up the place. But the people who came to you cannot be the people whose properties were destroyed. We're talking about market women who claim that they were given 30 minutes. They couldn't if you come from nowhere and start mm -hmm. dumping your things there, you're not part of the market uh, women's arrangement who supported us, who cooperated, who encouraged us to do that. Certainly, 
you have no right to be there, to be dumping your things there. But and I response, wouldn't know them because officially, but the response, they're, not the ones, they're not the ones we're dealing with. But the response to even illegal occupation is not distraction. Well, I wasn't there, and uh, we have security officers who have got the rules on how to implement things. When they tell you not to do something and you don't listen to them, you still break the rules. They have a way of dealing with that to ensure that you don't do it again. Do if that was what, if that's what they thought was the best thing to do at that particular point in time, I think in their best judgment, we have to give them that benefit of the doubt. So who pays for these, uh, what they call the words of the women? If I decide to go break into somebody's house, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, in the course of it, I lose my phone because I'm an, uh, uh, an armor of a thief, who, who pays for my phone? It may be not an exact uh, a good example, but the fact is that if you did something illegally, should you be waiting for somebody to come and compensate you for that? So government's not going to give you any compensation? I'm not aware of that. Not, none of those types of complaints have come to me formally on what I should do about that. So the military are also not taking any responsibility for these distractions? Why should they? They're enforcing the law. Are you telling me that with the sanitation... Uh, sanitation uh, Galamse, I'm mixing up sanitation and Galamse. <laughs> that's but the Galamse yeah. uh, Operation Vanguard that's going on, all those things that are being destroyed, are we going to pay them compensation for that? Th that's the different category. No, it's not altogether. a different category. Breaking the law is what we're talking about here. That's the issue. Because you cannot even independently verify whether these women you're talking about, in this case, are please, illegal please, occupants. Please, please, you please. told me that you've not please, met them. I have, I have gone there. Mm -hmm. We started the process. My Deputy Minister, Honorable Michael Jato, was there, took it up. After I went and initiated the program, we've engaged them on different consultations. We know them by name. We know the leadership by name. They're the ones who came up and gave the different stories. Said they are not part of it. Who owns the land? There are some family members. I don't have the names of them. There are two families contesting this particular land. Yes. Which one does government believe owns the land? We, 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 we have what is going to be on the last commission document that we're dealing with. Which one is that? We just want is to clean the place. Is it or We have cleaned the quartet? place up. Our job is to clean the place, we've done that. Yeah. Amy is to take over management of the place. And they are looking at the truthful ownership and dealing with them. Okay, now we can move beyond Malam. I mean, there's also another situation at Wager that's actually begging for some answers. Yeah. Close to the water body, yeah. it's one form of a landfill. <coughs> yes. And that particular landfill, they are saying it's some form of a defense to against the water bodies there because no Bojo specifically. Mm -hmm. But the place is terrible when it comes to the stench coming from this area. Yes. We do know that this poses huge threat to the lives and of the people there. The yeah. assembly says they're not going to shut down the place, but we know that they work at night. What's going to happen about the situation there? Well, the uh, uh, sanitation officers and engineers have gone there. Uh, they've submitted their report to us. We are now reviewing to see what line of action to take on that. But when the assembly says they've shut down the place, it means that the establishment of wrong has been done. Is it not so? Well, I guess so. But when you say we are reviewing, you create the impression that action has not been taken and you are not going to see what the future is going to be well, like. Well, if there's any remedial action that has to be uh, undertaken, yes, we'll sort to that. Okay, now let's talk about sewer systems because I brought to you the Dan Suma one. Yeah. In Tema Community 8, yeah. there's a similar, very terrible situation mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. the, this assembly there, the, the municipal assembly said they are waiting on Gapua to give them some form of um, instrument to carry the things that they need to put there before they get to work. And that when the people don't contribute to this particular work, they will not do the work as we find it today. These are the sort of things that the Ministry of Sanitation comes in to try and support. And some of the funds that are uh, being made available to us are those funds that we allocate to these kinds of emergency projects. We've just finished the allocation of the funds. We're looking for the release of the funds. And if there's a situation that meets uh, the use of those funds, we'll make those funds available while we negotiate with GAPOA to see what else we can do to add on to that support. But they said it's been happening since last year. Well, that's not been brought to my attention up to this point in time. Remember that the local authorities, the Metropolitan Authority, is the one responsible for for this. And so if they've been handling it and feel that they can manage it properly, they don't bring it to my attention. They, they've when not actually been handling level, it. They've been waiting on GAPOA for God knows how long. And the people's contribution on the ground, that's what they've been waiting for. Well, my point is that if they have not brought it to our attention that they need some remedial uh, action uh, while awaiting Gapua support. I will not be able to take action on that. Okay, so you're still waiting for that report to come or you have money available to help them deal with this problem? We have the money available that we are locating to uh, initiatives of the sort. Mm -hmm. So we will look and see if it meets uh, the funds that we have, we'll make that available to, to help them out. Uh, this brings up a bigger conversation on sewer systems. How many do we have functional in our current term? 
I wouldn't know all the numbers now because some are functional, some are choked. Uh, okay. About four or five of them have been rehabilitated by the uh, Christ Ridge Improvement Project. And we've got the Gasly Project uh, that we've just uh, uh, launched. Oh, no, we're just about to launch, actually. We've done all the paperwork. We're ready to launch it. And that will open up a, a few more. Legon. Uh, yes, I was coming to that. One. That's a long-term project. Oh, no. It, Legon has been rehabilitated. It's working. It's working now? It's working, yes. It's one of those examples. When did it start working? Kolebu is working. When did it start working? Oh, about two years ago. Okay, that's interesting. Yes. Mm. But, I mean, I, I did hear your Kolebu deputy, is another one. I did hear your deputy say it is vetted that only two out of the 34 were functional in, 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 in Akari and Tema. When was that vetted? Of course, that was last year. Last year, yes. yes. And I said, uh, he was just coming to the ministry. He hadn't gone to the ministry. So he didn't know what was there. That was <laughs> that's said. interesting to know. That was But he comes in there to come and listen to and talk to you guys before he comes to speak at the vetting. That's what I'm giving to understand. Oh, no. It all depends on what information he gets. And mm -hmm. He may not have met uh, uh, the uh, gentleman who's responsible for uh, the asset project. He would have given a lot more details than that. You also, I mean, the president hinted of strict compliance and enforcement of sanitation rules and regulations. Yeah. As of now, have you put together the sanitation authority? The sanitation authority is something that has to go through a process. Uh, the proposal for the, 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 the policy approval is before cabinet. If it's approved, then we go to the bill. The bill goes through parliament. That's different from sanitation brigade. Uh, I, I get that. I hope you're not using the word yes, sustainable. Not at all. So the process, uh, the authority is in the process. It, it's not coming to be yet. Okay. So when do we expect this authority to be in force? I cannot say because it depends on... Cabinet, it depends on parliament, and no parliament can take forever to approve something. It can take a very short time. Also depends the on the issues, issues that cabinet will raise at the policy level that might require us to go back and uh, do some other work on it. You can't really uh, put a time on that. If you're we talking about my hope uh, and what I, I desire, I would like to say by the time we enter the uh, second quarter, we'd like to see it come into being. But that's, that's my hope and desire. Okay, now... Today, we're told that, I mean, the YEA has actually disengaged Zoom Lion permanently on this contract. You told me last year that there were other contracts on sanitation levels that were being reviewed. Yeah. What's the status of these reviews? Well, they're all before our legal people to, to, to look at the legal implications of abrogating those contracts. Uh, some are uh, also being reviewed by the assemblies to uh, maybe re-engage them. All depends on the locality we're dealing with. So the, uh, the Zoom line thing, uh, that comes out of the fact that, uh, remember, when we first introduced the National Youth Employment Program under, under President Kufo, we find the Zoom line workers in the streets every day. Mm -hmm. They were working every day, they were cleaning up. It got to a point where they stopped working. The arguments go between they're not being paid well by whoever the contractor is. The contractor also claims that he's not being paid regularly, but it's neither here nor there. The streets have to be clean. If, uh, if you have a contract to clean, you clean. If they owe you, take them to court or go through the right process and get uh, uh, the money that you need. In fact, the decision that YEA has taken is part of the measures that the government is taking to ensure that we clean the place. And I think uh, it's a very wise decision. We have to find a way to re-engage them. Uh, Zoom Line is engaged in many other activities. They're engaged in the collection of the waste. They're engaged in the haulage of the waste. They engaged in the, the disposal, management of the landfill. There are many other ways that can make money. And, 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 I, I, and I'm, some I'm of not, these things, many have complained apart. I'm not part of the, uh, I wasn't part of the meeting uh, that YEA and they took to uh, issue this directive, but I'm sure they did it advisedly. You did tell me that you would not hesitate to actually abrogate contracts which are not functioning, which are frivolous true, and all of that. True, yes. Up to now, we've not seen you done any of those. Oh, well, you just don't do things overnight. Remember the legal implications on things that you do. If it's an individual contract, one person... So how come why you was able to do it? And it's part of the reviews that have come up, and it does internal consultation. My point about not being there at the meetings, the day that the decision was taken, that they should be abrogated, because they have the contract with them. But we made our recommendations on the fact that we need to get the, the cleaners back in the streets sweeping. Zoom is a very powerful Sunday, entity. I'm sorry? It's a very powerful entity. Which one? A Zoom Lion. Oh, yes, yes, And yes. over the period, it's not been easy being able to call up get this contract, even if reports suggest so. I, I would, I, well, I, I don't know the angle from which you are you coming, but if they have bona fide contracts and they've been doing their job very well, I don't think anybody can abrogate the contracts uh, just like that. But if there are problems with the contracts, 
whoever the, the, the uh, person or the entity is who gave them contract would have good reason to be able to abrogate it. So they are not more powerful than government. Mm -hmm. They are not more powerful than you and I combined as a government. So all the parents, we gave, we as government give them the contract. We as government can decide to change the contract and give them something else. Because I mean, many know that some of these um, we would reveal, we would abrogate, has been said in times past, but I never saw the light of day. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> I don't know if you want us to start uh, sacking people and uh, cancel contracts for somebody to say we wish hunting and political victimization, that sort of thing. I want the assurance that this would indeed happen. Oh, certainly, certainly. Certainly it would happen. If your contract is not being implemented according to the tenets of the contract, you know, you, it has to be abrogated. Okay. Now, there's also the understanding that there's a master plan you put together to do waste management in Accra. What is the status of this master plan and what exactly is going to happen in this case? It's not waste management in terms of solid waste alone, it's liquid waste. Mm -hmm. Everything that covers the value chain of waste. What we've lacked in the country has been a long-term plan on uh, waste management. And this master plan, is to, first of all, is focused on Gamma for a start. To show us all the do's and don'ts of what should happen with the good strategic planning when it comes to managing waste in the country. And that's going to handle everything from the uh, entire value chain of waste uh, disposal. Sweeping, collection, haulage, treatment, disposal. All of that will be part of it. Sewage systems opening up, being mapped out so that everybody knows uh, where they're going to. The uh, building codes and the laws where you don't go give somebody land that sits on a sewage system and where they do excavation, they perforate it and that sort of thing. It's covering all those things. It's a comprehensive exercise that will give everybody a chance to know where the, the sewage lines are and what we need to do, what we, we, we cannot do and uh, where the waste is going to be conveyed to, how it's going to be disposed of, what is going to be recycled, whether it's going to be conveyed into uh, uh, process into energy or into uh, so value added item like compost and so on and so forth. How, how it's a comprehensive me, one. Drill down. Has any of this started? I don't understand what it means. Has, has any it? section of this master plan started? Oh, the master plan is just uh, is its initial stages. We are reviewing it now with the with the stakeholders to uh, to uh, put final uh, uh, finishing touches to it. Currently, it's the first time we've just currently done as we like speak. That. Is there a coordinator plan to clean, to clear, to also haul? garbage and do we know where we take them? Yes, there is. There's a coordinated plan. We've just come on board. It's before cabinet for approval. We've got a quick action plan. We've got a, a rather quick impact plan. We've got a short term uh, uh, plan. We've got a medium term plan. All of those things are together before cabinet for approval. How many landfill sites are in Accra? Accra, we've got three. Three? Yes. Properly managed? Well, it all depends on where you're coming from. Uh, some even argue that they're not properly managed. Are they engineered managed because landfill sites? Yes, they are engineered. The engineer. Are they enough? Well, we've not, no, certainly not enough. We bring some more. We, we bring some more. And how many? What's the percentage of waste we are able to actually um, take off the streets that cry? Oh, we're going about 30% that we're able to get out regularly. But it's certainly far more than that. It used to be far, far higher than that. So 70% is not cleared? Immediately it's not being cleared. Eventually it gets cleared, but it's heaped up over time now. What's been done to fix the problem? It's engaging the, the, the service providers to do what they have to do on a regular basis. They co complain about money we owe them that's being negotiated to, to be paid. And we're trying to see how we can get some of the service providers provided the equipment that they need. Uh, we're working on getting equipment, trucks, uh, for them to be able to collect that. Remember uh, what the president announced during the launch of the National Sanitation Campaign, mm -hmm. was that all or most of the uh, evacuation trucks, waste evacuation trucks, are all used ones that are coming from abroad. And most of those that were brought that were relatively new by Zoom line are broken down and they're all rusted. And so we bring in a uh, whole fleet of them uh, to many? support the private sector. Uh, it all depends on what funding, funding we can get, but we're looking at but a target, we're looking at a target, initial target of about 50 for the greater Accra area and would go up to possibly 300 nationwide or more. I mean, okay, so I'm talking to you about Accra. There are serious problems in Kumasi, in Takradi. Yes, and yes. virtually all the major cities across the country. 
filth is virtually engulfed in sections. 58 trucks we're talking about yes. are not just for greater Accra alone. The regional capitals are also that will be provided for. Mm -hmm. So there's pl there are plans also to equip them to be able to do Who that. Who run these trucks? Zoom Lion? No, no, there's combination. There are two levels. One level is that the assemblies are supposed to evacuate 20% of the waste. So we're trying to get some of the trucks to the assemblies so they can be responsible for the 20% of the waste. 80% is supposed to be evacuated by the, uh, the uh, private uh, service providers. And so we're looking at another arrangement to get them. That's what I said about 30, 300 uh, plus trucks that we can give to them on a lease basis so they can also operate effectively in collecting the 80%. Okay, now let me find out from you because we're still talking about how the plan is to clear filth all the streets of Akai and all of these related plans. Yeah. Dustbins. Dustbins are supposed to be available in our houses, the you and I. Garbage cans outside? We've been misusing that. Mm -hmm. You give people dustbins and then they take them in and put water in there and uh, put some other use to, 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 to dustbins. So there's a big problem with that, okay? We're looking at uh, some uh, bigger bins, uh, 1,100 cc bins, which will be available at doorsteps of some of the, uh, the, the houses, the compounds. And then we have the uh, mini transfer stations where those dustbins uh, will be uh, pouring the waste into that will eventually be sent to those uh, uh, mini transfer stations okay. where they will eventually now be conveyed to the disposal sites. When will these come in? The funding is before us today. Mm. I get the approval from the Minister of Finance. We'll be able to access them within the next month. How much have you got in from the Minister of Finance so far? We just started the year, except for the goods and services that they're, they're providing for regular running of the ministries. The capital budgets have not been released yet. Okay, now let me also get this particular issue because, I mean, it's connected to our conversation in this particular line. And maybe I've had very little time for talking about water, but it is interesting to find out whether or not we have plans, we have ambitions. Mm -hmm. The money is yet to be released. Mm -hmm. So all of the big things that we hope to do, I wish you were going to meet the timelines for this it. This is government, my good friend, this is government. It's not Honorable Kofiada's job to dig in his pocket and move it and put it out. There. I get you. The process you have to go through. I get you. You don't go through that process, but finance will not release the money to you. But when you give us some of these timelines, like yes. June, were you minded by this process? For, for all you know, if I'd come here maybe uh, next week, I probably will have a different answer to you. <laughs> As I said this afternoon, it was my plan to go to the Minister of Finance and, for, and find out where we are with us. And this is the, 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 the cash plan and the procurement plan that we present to them. It's on the basis of this that they'll be able to release the money to us. Okay, so what's the status of this? Um, you said some 892 million debt was owed, and that's why we still have filled on the streets of Accra some time ago. That's why we can't clear them. Have we been able to clear the amount of money owed these institutions? No, we have not. We as a ministry... We're not directly responsible for that, but we're facilitating. Okay. Some of that debt is owed uh, uh, through the this is, uh, Assemblies Common Fund and through the local government and then through the assemblies themselves. Some of them are being uh, paid. Uh, some, I think, were paid last year. I don't have the exact figure yet. My monitoring team has gone around to collate those figures for me. Uh, we needed that badly to be able to complete this cash plan before the Minister of Finance uh, gives us the releases. And we are waiting that. And I'm hoping hoping that by next week we have that. There are a lot of purchasing of dustbins that are supposed to be done and distributed to homes by Zoomland some time back. We understand the CID is investigating that. What's the status of that investigation? I'm not aware of the uh, status of the investigation. Uh, I think the issues revolve around one million of those dustbins that were supposed to have been procured. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't want to, to uh, really prejudice anything that's being done by the investigative authorities, but it was supposed to be a conflict between the Minister of uh, Local Government and the, mm. the Presidency or some other agency. I don't know how it went through, but okay. one million dollars being was supposed to have been procured. Apparently, it was not done properly, and they're investigated. For all you know, maybe it have been done properly. I can't tell. Okay. Now, salination plant, what's the status of it? We just came up with a meeting with the uh, operators of the plant. Uh, we're looking at how to resolve the matters that are before us. Uh, Viewers have to bear in mind that the major problem with this plant is that Ghana Water Company is bleeding. They have to pay so much money every month on electricity, on the volume of water they're generating, and they're not able to sustain it. The argument is that we've got enough fresh water we shouldn't have built that to start with. But the plant is here now. It's an asset that's before us. And now we're negotiating to see how we resolve 
the financial issues around, around that. We had a meeting with the Minister of Finance and with uh, the, uh, our transaction advisor. Uh, we have some options that we have to put before government. Introduction of prepaid meters. Yes. When is it going to happen? Water prepaid meters? Yes. We have concluded some uh, negotiations to buy what we call the smart meters uh, in huge volumes that will get everybody uh, to have one that would enhance the revenue collection uh, effort of uh, Ghana Water Company. I get about one We've not concluded that. I cannot tell because it's a procurement issue and uh, we have to go through the process. Are we still but I would like to have that done as quickly as possible. Are we still having water bodies being polluted by Garamsey operations? I have not had the latest report in terms of them operating. I have heard many of them have run away from those areas and uh, I think it's come down, but I cannot say for sure whether some are still being polluted from areas where perhaps the Operation Vanguard team has not gotten to. And what you recommend if you are to, of course, you are part of the Interministerial Task Force, right? True, yes. Is your recommendation that the ban on uh, what they call it, uh, sports go mining, should be lifted? based on what you've seen in the water bodies improvement status? There are many facts that come before us. We have to discuss all these facts and make an informed judgment on that. I think depending on where we are with that, if there's compliance with the law, I think we should lift it. If there's no compliance, I think we should still perhaps hold it back for a while. Oh, no, but we should do regular updates on this particular level. I but agree. I thank you so much. I guess we can leave it off here. Uh, my time is up this day. But thank you so much for joining us. My guest has been the Sanitation and Water Resources Minister Joseph Kofiada, thank you so much for joining us on Afro today.